art or nothing, S. Darius Parker's Path from ADHD to Artistry, written and read by Trelawney Michelle. S. Darius Parker was introduced to art by his mother as a means of setting down somewhere. He was restless and his mind skipped thoughts just as fast as his feet needed to move. You could say he was hot-footed. As a child, however, this can be a little problematic in the classroom setting. His mother figured that with an outlet to create and imagine out loud, as well as burn some energy, then the hyperness would level itself out. And it did. In addition to art, Parker also played sports. After high school, he moved from his hometown in West Georgia to Payne College, a private HBCU in Augusta on a baseball scholarship. Playing basketball for Carver Bible College in Atlanta for a year was his next stop before joining the U.S. Air Force for five years. This allowed him to travel more expansively, which, as most artists will agree with, stimulates the creative process. Indulging in new sounds, tastes, and views while simultaneously pointing out the similarities and differences of how they're living over there to how we're living over here does wonders for our imagination. I found myself always in the means of doing things with arts and creativity. Um, and just kind of communication. And that's, those are kind of really big things um, that I just really love. And just and to me, it's kind of understanding how different cultures communicate, um, storytelling, and being able to kind of tell that story in different ways, learning it in um, just different languages and a different way people communicate, not only through emotion, um, physical, you know, I feel like nonverbal communication is huge. Traveling is also a means of searching. But as Nigerian writer Chimimanda Ngozi Adichie said best, you come back home to find yourself there. I asked him what he was searching for during his deployments in Korea and Japan. And following a pregnant pause, his response was... Permission, I guess, in a sense. Mm. Like, I think, I think that's the idea in it in that... Um, now, I, I think it was more so for just permission from myself to kind of say that, um, to kind of say to other people I've done and I've proven that I could do all that y'all said that I should do. Now it's time to go back and do what I, what I know I want to do. It was time to take the images and influences swirling around his head and make a reality of them. Actualize them. Play and practice. Experiment. See if it was possible to bust a U-turn and reclaim his childhood dream of being an artist while proving that, as Baya founder Najee says, art dreams do come true. But money wasn't the motivator. Fulfillment was. The need to self-express and master the art of being perceptive was the goal. And that was one of the things I learned from the military is just being very uh, perceptive of people's emotions and ideas and thinking patterns. Um, so when I took that, uh, took that from there, I went and joined, um, got out of spot five years in the military, um, got out the electronics, really kind of struggled with the uh, design aspect until um, one day it was just kind of like art or nothing. Um, found myself in a little kind of small room, and from there it was just basically um, shows art over money. And 15 years as a graphic designer, um, just kind of learning different crafts, but kind of always wanted to do more of the fine arts. Um, and again, it was just the aspects of more communicating, and I felt learning how to communicate through art. Um, So uh, pretty much um, from there, my art career um, began probably, I started painting um, or wanting to paint about two and a half years ago. I met Charlie Palm at uh, West End Studios, or West End uh, Print Shop. Well, just before meeting Charlie, however, Parker had just resigned from his job and was praying for the opportunity to devote himself full time to art. He'd even applied to SCAD for painting, but none of what he was hoping for panned out. As he put it, God had a better plan. The spirit spoke, he honored what he was told, and the resources poured in, this time in the form of a mentor. Charlie was the first full-time Black artist that Parker had met. According to Charlie's website about his own art intentions, from loose sketches and tight lines to blocks of color to nuances of mixed media, his art manifests in visual expressions to the questions, what came before? What truth must be told? 
Mentors hold up the proverbial mirror for us to see ourselves and to make sure we're challenging ourselves and not just going with the status quo or what we feel would be accepted by society, but to go deeper within and emerge with the courage to radically express what we discovered about our inner and outer worlds. Um, a couple of things that I really like to tell stories about is our people, especially from that aspect of a black man. Um, and I, in my perception, understand not only what black identity is, but kind of the process of what, what I feel is like an emasculation. Um, I like to collect, connect there because I think we still have a lot of roots Scrolling through his portfolio on his website, a painting of Tupac Shakur, half Basquiat, it caught my eye and brought to mind Kendrick Lamar's song, Mortal Man, in which he montaged an old interview of Tupac and said, I get behind a mic and I don't know what type of energy I'm going to push out or where it comes from. Trips me out sometimes because the spirits. We ain't even really rapping. We just letting our dead homies tell stories for us. There's also a painting of a black man with locks that are two strands twisted and dyed blonde with his head down and a screeching crow on top of his head. In another, a young black woman with blue-green skin and blue-black hair has bowls of cotton atop her head and a screeching baby crow nestled in the cotton. Then there's the gray-bearded black man blindfolded with a red piece of cloth that has a Republican elephant on one side and the Democratic donkey on the other. Two crows sit on a man's bald head, and the bigger one of the two has a dollar bill in his beak. Behind the man are shadowed figures with their fists raised high. I use the crow as a means to communicate as a harbinger, uh, a messenger, but also mm. um, a lot of different aspects of uh, lingering things from Jim Crow. If you read the uh, letter of Willie Lynch, it says that it, the things that they would teach us would last for a thousand years, and we're probably really only at about 500, 400 and some odd years. So it's kind of trying to show us how we still have those things attached to us so that we can start to detach ourselves from those things. Um, and so that's just kind of it. Um, that's just kind of my voice and just trying to communicate to our people and. Um, about our people. Parker has an upcoming virtual exhibit with Black Art in America, which will be his introductory show to our audience on Tuesday, April 19, 2022. I asked him what he wanted participants to not walk away with, but click away with since it's a virtual show. His response was for us to leave with the sense of awareness of the things that we face, but be empowered to know that we can and are overcoming them. One example of the issues we're constantly confronted with as children of the African diaspora is balancing the truth of who we are with the need for economic survival. Like I spent time in corporate America and I felt like as being the only black person in the room, I always had to answer for my entire race. Yeah. And I feel like we still have to kind of do that in a, we still have to kind of do that and we still have to do it in a way that is unapologetic because we have to respect ourselves and, and who we are in that time and who our generation is and tell that story. Um, but I think that it's always that battle against trying to eat too. And I think in this current generation, we're kind of facing a lot of it's kind of two worlds, white guilt and increase in black economics and it's an, it's the ability to kind of ride that wave and kind of create that create that voice in our next generation